Frank Sinatra. Although he later conquered films and television, it was radio that first made Old Blue Eyes a superstar. And now Radio Spirits has carefully remastered 60 rare episodes guest starring Frank Sinatra on programs such as Suspense, Life with Luigi, Rocky Fortune, and Burns and Allen. Hear Frank Sinatra joke, sing, and act with his friends Jack Benny, Bob Hope, Lucille Ball, Humphrey Bogart, Abbott and Costello, Bing Crosby, and many more. 30 hours and 20 cassettes all with Frank Sinatra, including a 64-page booklet with photographs and detailed histories of each of the 60 shows. No true Frank Sinatra fan should be without a rare collection like this. The 60 greatest old-time radio shows starring Frank Sinatra and friends. Order now by calling 1-800-RADIO-48. That's 1-800-723-4648 or order online at MediaBay.com. Welcome back to KNX. It's time now for J. Michael in the substitution on Challenge of the Yukon from February 11th, 1947. The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your husband! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge. And justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston stopped his team in front of the mine where Jim Peters was working. Okay. Hey, King. Come here, boy. Suddenly, he heard an explosion coming from the base of the shaft. Jim, Jim, are you all right? I'm coming, Jim. I'm coming. Where are you? Over here. Help me. You badly hurt? Oh, oh that flash went off too soon there. I couldn't get out of the way. Here, let me help you. I, I can't see, man. Put your arm over my shoulders, Jim. Oh. I'll get you back to your cabin. Bring the doctor over from town. Is it? Is it serious, Doc? Am I hurt bad? I'm afraid it's uh, bad news, Jim. That blast got your eyes. I'm very much afraid you're going to be blind. Oh, no. No, Doc. Do you uh, think it's permanent, Doctor? Well, I don't like to say. Sometimes miracles happen. But you'll be blind for a long time. But... But I'm all alone. I don't know what I'll no, do. No, don't worry, Jim. We'll get someone to take care of you. I wish I could have told you something more cheerful, but I think it's better if you know the truth. Now, keep that bandage over your eyes, and I'll come back again tomorrow. All right, Doggy. Well, a nice dog you have here. <laughs> he seems worried about you. Hello, Shed. He's... He's my nephew's dog. Well, have you a nephew here, Jim? Well, not here. He's working our claim down in Selkirk. Hmm? We weren't doing very well with it. it. It ain't a very good one. So I came up here to try my luck. Say, uh, couldn't you get him to come up and take care of you? Well, maybe he could. His claim ain't much better than this one. I think it'd be a good idea if you'd send for him. Well, I'll be running along. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, thanks, Doc. I'll stay here with him, Doctor. I saw one of his neighbors, and I went after you. He said he'd stay here with Jim tonight. Well, that's fine. He must have someone with him. Bye, Doc. Goodbye, Sergeant. <laughs> I'm certainly sorry about this, Jim. Well, I guess I'm in a pretty bad spot. Yeah. Jake Hubbard said he'd be over to help take care of him. Jake Hubbard? Well, that's nice of him. I knew Jake down in Selkirk. He came up here just after I did. Does he know your nephew? 
go slightly, I guess. He wasn't in Selkirk very long before I left. Now, what's your nephew's name? Bob Dilly. I, I guess the best thing to do is have Bob sell the claim down there and come up and work this one. The ship here will sure be glad to see him. How'd you happen to bring Chef up here with him? I, I needed a sled dog, and we couldn't scrape enough money together to buy one. I see. I, I intended to send Chef back to Bob any day now, but as long as Bob is coming up here, it won't be necessary. Come in. Hello, Oh, hello, Jake. It's uh, Jake Hubbard, Jim. Oh. Jim, I hear you had an accident. What? Did you get your eyes? Yep. The the doc said that I'm going to be blind. Why? He was blasting in his mind. Charge went off before he thought it would. I'm sure sorry to hear it. You think you could stay with him for a few weeks? I'm planning on having my nephew come up here from Selkirk. Well, uh, I was going to Selkirk in a few days, but uh, my partner will stay with me. Well, if you were going to Selkirk, maybe you could bring Bob back with you. That's a good idea. Sure, I'd be glad to. Now, while I'm gone, my partner will stay here with Jim. Well, you know him, don't you, Sergeant? His name's Butch. Uh, Butch Tracy. Oh, uh, I think I've met him. Well, that's sure nice of you, Jake. We'll move our stuff over here tomorrow. Our claim's near here, and Butch and I can take care of you. I don't like the idea of moving over to Jim's cabin. Ah, uh, quit grumbling, Butch. You've been doing it all morning. It's too far from our claim. We ain't getting enough gold out of it as it is. I don't know how we're going to get along if you go to Selkirk and I have to play nursemaid to a blind man. Here we are. What are you talking about? This is Jim's claim. I want to have a look at it. Well, what for? He blasted yesterday and nobody found out what the blast uncovered. Come on. Come in here with me. I suppose you're going to ask me to work as mine, too. Got a match handy? It's kind of dark in here. Yeah, here. Here's where he blasted. Butch, look at this. Wow. That rock, it's yellow. It sure is. He made a real strike yesterday. He doesn't know it. There's some people who have all the luck. You don't call it lucky to be blind, do you? We're the ones who are lucky. We are. Nobody knows about this but us. Yeah. But when Jim's nephew comes up here, he'll know about it in a hurry. Maybe he won't come up here. You said you were going after him. I met his nephew when I was down in Selkirk. Yeah? Nobody up here knows him except Jim. Jim can't see. Well, what good is that going to do us? I got a nephew of my own just his age. He has a young voice just like Bob's. We can bring him up here and fool Jim for just a couple of weeks. We'll have all the gold we'll need to go back to the States. You mean, then your nephew is this Bob? Why not? But you can't get away with it. Jim will know about, about what he says, about, about what he talks about. A fool, I thought of that. And that he lives in Selkirk. He knows Bob Daly. He's been hunting with him. Knows all about him. We can get away with it, I tell you. Yeah. Might be worth trying. In the meantime, while I'm going down to Selkirk and back, you can be working a claim at him. Get everything out of it you can. Let's pause here on KNX. To find out more about old-time radio, old-time video, and the pleasures of listening to audiobooks, visit the Audiobook Club website, www.audiobookclub.com, where you can get four audiobooks for just one penny. MediaBay.com Now for the conclusion to the Challenge of the Yukon here on KNX. Hello, Jim. Sergeant Preston, is that you? Yes. How are you? Well, I'm getting along fine. Good. Oh, it sure is good to see you. I mean, good to hear you again. You've been away a long time. Well, I had to go north on a patrol, Jim. Has your nephew come yet? Well, not yet. Just pull up a chair, Sergeant. Thanks. 
Did Jake go down to Selkirk after him? Yep. He left about two days after the accident. Uh Uh-huh. Has Butch been taking good care of you? Well, yes, as good as I can expect. Well, I have been able to manage for myself pretty well while he's working on his claim. I saw him on the trail when I came this way. He was going toward his cabin with a heavy sack on his back and seemed to be in rather a hurry. Didn't stop to talk. Well, I wonder what he was carrying. I, I bet that's Jake and Bob now. Uh, quiet, Chip. Hello, Jake. And, uh, I suppose this is Bob. Yeah, Bob, uh, this is Sergeant Preston. Hello, Sergeant. Oh, Bob, is that you? Hello, Uncle Jim. Uh, I'm sure glad to see you, Bob. How that oh. Shep is glad, too. Shep? Oh, oh, the dog. <laughs> yeah. Hello there, Shep. We uh, got back as soon as possible, Jim. It was quite a trip. I'm sure glad you're here. Come on, Bob. Help me bring in this luggage. Well, I'll see you in a minute, Uncle Jim. Well, Shep, didn't you go with him? It uh, looks as if Shep would rather stay with you, Jim. Well, that's funny. I, I guess he doesn't realize it's Bob. Jim, didn't you tell me Bob raised Shep? Sure. He got him when he was a pup. Oh. But uh, he ain't seen him for about four months. Well, I said I better get out of here and make room for everybody. I'll be back to see you in the morning, Jim. It'll be worth it. Two weeks of this with you and Jake and me working, we'll have all the gold out of here in no time. I didn't like the way that Molly looked at me yesterday when that fool dog Shep growled at me. I think he suspects something. Even if he does, you can't prove anything for a while. By then we'll be out of here. I saw him heading for Jim's cabin a few minutes ago. What if he has old Jim describe his nephew? What if he does? With the same height and weight, you have sandy hair and blue eyes. Description will fit, won't it? Well, I don't like it. I'm scared. Yeah, had you wait here. Just to satisfy you, I'll sneak up behind Jim's cabin and listen to what they're saying. Now, you get this goal ready and meet me at our cabin with Jake. King, you can't come inside with me. I don't think old Jack would like it. You wait here. It's Preston, Jim. How are you today? Oh, I'm about to see my guest. Pull up a chair, Sergeant. It's nice of you to drop in. Jim, I didn't want to worry you yesterday. But I'm wondering if the boy who came here with Butch is really your nephew. Well, sure. At least I think so. Is your nephew about 20 with sandy hair and blue eyes? Yep, that's him, all right. Well, guess I was wrong. When I stopped in your mind today, he and Butch had certainly done a lot of digging. What's wrong, Jim? He's looking toward the back of your cabin. Guess he hears King out there, Jim. Chef's the reason I was suspicious of your nephew. I'd swear Shep didn't know him. Well, one sure way of telling this, Bob, is the scar on his eyebrow. Well, it, it it cuts right across it, about oh, about an inch long. A scar? Well, I didn't notice a scar. I'm sure there wasn't. Any. What's that? Pick oh, no. up somebody. King, my fella, what is it? Butch, get up. Get him off me. What are you doing behind this cabin? That's what worries, Jeff. Were you trying to hear what we were saying? I, I was just coming to the cabin, I tell you. King wouldn't have jumped, you if you hadn't pulled a gun. I must have dropped it. You didn't drop it. You heard Jim tell me about the scar on Bob's eye. And you knew I'd know at once that the man you brought here isn't Jim's nephew at all. He is. He is Jim's nephew. Come on, Butch. We're going to your cabin and bring Jake, a so-called nephew, back here. Watch him, King. What's wrong, Jake? Get in there, all of you. Look, go ahead. Go ahead, Jake. 
Jim. Who, who is it? It's Butch and Craig. The boy is pretending to be your nephew, Jim. They're under arrest. But, but why? The blast of dynamite that blinded you uncovered a rich vein of gold. They had a clever scheme to steal it away from you, Jim. But Chef spoiled it. He knew that Pete here wasn't his master, even if you didn't. I forgot about that talk. You and your fancy idea. Why, I ought to... Shut up, Butch. Watch him, King. But, but Bob, where is Bob? We'll get your real nephew to come up to your mind, Jim. You're going to be a rich man. You see, I found a lot of your gold in Jake's cabin. Come on, boys. We're going to town. Watch them, King. And that's the challenge of the Yukon. Join me next time for another edition of the Radio Hall of Fame on KNX. And be sure to visit our home page on the World Wide Web at RadioHOF.org. I'm Carl Amari.